This screencast will focus on Solus's integration with IBM DataPower appliances and how Solus message routers can act as the messaging backbone. First, this screencast will touch briefly on why to use Solus message routers instead of MQQ managers for your messaging backbone. Then we'll take a typical data power integration use case and show how to switch from IBM MQ to Solus for messaging. The screencast does this by looking at an existing application, outlining the architecture when using Solus, and then actually demonstrating the switch by looking at Solus message router configuration, data power appliance configuration changes, and finally by passing messaging traffic end to end. Let's take a very quick look at why to choose Solus for your messaging backbone between data power and your applications. First, it unlocks cost savings. The consolidation and virtualization combine to significantly reduce TCO. It simplifies the architecture. Similar to data power appliances for integration, appliances for messaging is simpler rather than lots of software running on many servers, all being independently managed, maintained, and upgraded. Provides better robustness. The Solus message routers support automatic fault tolerance, integrated disaster recovery, and exceptional slow consumer handling. It gives you unmatched performance. Hundreds of thousands of persistent messages per second and millions under fan-out scenarios. And it enables new applications. Solus message routers unlock new next-generation applications like big data, cloud, mobile, IoT, and others, giving you a strategic data movement platform on which to evolve your business. So now let's switch to the data power integration use case. At a high level, the scenario shown here is a use case like a financial firm's customer portal, an e-commerce website, or a REST service gateway for mobile applications. At the top, there are users of the system that make HTTP requests for information. These requests are sent to the data power security gateway. The security gateway will authenticate and authorize the clients. Then it will forward the acceptable requests to the integration layer. The integration layer will inspect the message content, transform it, and route the message to the correct backend application or applications. It will also aggregate the responses and transform them into a response formatted as expected by the clients, which it then forwards to the security layer to return to the original client. In these scenarios, the system must deal with a large number of individual users who can have high peaks in demand. The applications are critical to business needs, so requests are load balanced across multiple data power security gateways for scale and fault tolerance. Similarly, there are multiple integration appliances, again for scale and fault tolerance. The backend applications have their own performance and persistence needs and require many queue manager clusters to meet peak demand. Once done, you end up with an architecture shown here. It's reasonably simple except for the many messaging servers needed to meet the scale and peak demand. If you switch to Solus for the messaging backbone, you end up with a much simpler architecture. Because of the performance and support for virtualization, Solus can replace and consolidate many tens of queue managers onto a single set of fault-tolerant Solus message routers. The integration of HA, DR management, and other functions also greatly simplify the platform and increase its robustness. How does this integration work? Solus and DataPower integrate together using RESTful HTTP. To enable a high message rate between DataPower and Solus, multiple parallel HTTP connections are used in both directions. This avoids the round-trip performance limitation of blocking HTTP requests, unlocking the full capacity of the Solus message router. Furthermore, the use of bidirectional HTTP posts removes the possibility of message loss, which can exist when using HTTP GET requests to pull for messages. When a REST message is received, Solus converts the message to the Solus message format, which is the canonical form for routing in Solus. And finally, for request reply scenarios, the reply contents will be transported in the body of the 200 OK HTTP responses. So let's now get into the details of how you actually configure Solus and Data Power to integrate and allow messages to flow. First, let's look at the Solus configuration. This consists of enabling the REST service both on the Solus message router globally and within the Solus virtual message broker. Second, there is configuration to support persistent messaging, including the durable queues for the backend applications. And finally, there is some JNDI configuration to allow JMS applications to successfully connect to Solus and bind to their persistent messaging queues. All right, as outlined, here's Soladmin with the Solus messaging appliance already managed. I pre-configured the appliance to save time in this demonstration. First, globally, you need to enable the service. And that, you can see, as Soladmin is already done here. REST for incoming and outgoing is enabled. 
And then below here is an easy way to see the services as a whole throughout the whole Solus appliance. And in this case, we have a REST service enabled for our virtual message broker REST integration demo. It's enabled on port 5080 and for SSL 5443. If you look at an individual me virtual message broker, you can see that the same services are represented here, and you can see that their admin state and operational state is up and up. For the JMS application, you need a queue. The queue JMS inventory is created here, and that's what we will use to bind our JMS application in this demonstration. And then for JMS, you also need the JMS connection factory, so JNDI lookups are enabled. The connection factory is created here, and the queue mapping is created here, where the JMS JNDI queue is mapped to the actual physical queue here. So now let's look at the DataPower appliance. With the flexibility of DataPower, there are many ways that it can be configured to use Solus. In this screencast, I will show you one solution which is simple and parallels DataPower MQ configuration. To start, DataPower is configured with an application multi protocol gateway which processes external requests. This multi protocol gateway then sends the requests over MQ using the DataPower MQ configuration. The reply follows a similar path in reverse. For Solus integration, create a new multi-protocol gateway that will handle the Solus message router connectivity. Then, existing application multi-protocol gateways need to be updated to switch from the MQQ manager as the backend to the newly created Solus multi-protocol gateway. The data power application processing rules do not need to change, so the conversion is very simple. Okay, we have here our data power integration appliance. And it's set up already with our e-commerce example. The e-commerce example is using MQ for the backend messaging, as you can see by the backside URL, where it's setting up its queue for requests and replies. For the purpose of demonstration, this just has a simple little policy. This policy does a slight transform from the incoming order request to the backend inventory system. And in the reverse direction, it does a similar transform so that the backend inventory system response is transformed into a format the clients understand. Let's just take a quick look. So a very simple transform to do that for the purposes of demonstration. And the content is XML in both directions because that's what our system, our example is using. So now, how do you migrate to Solus? First, you need to create a new multi-protocol gateway to handle the Solus connectivity. This is similar to the queue manager. We'll call this Solus. The back end has to have connectivity to your Solus message router. The front side should have connectivity to an internal port that we can use for connecting this with other existing multi-protocol gateways. So I picked here an internal IP and port 5085 and supported just the default options. So if we add that in, now we will also switch this to XML in both directions. And we will pick a simple policy that allows messages to flow in both directions. And you can see here the simple policy. OK, great. Now if we return, Now we just have to update the e-commerce multi-protocol gateway. So this is currently pointing to MQQ Manager. We'll replace this with a static backend that points to the internal Solus multi-protocol gateway. And here we'll put the target queue in as well at the URL, the, which will allow messages to flow to the inventory system. Then the only other remaining item is you have to add one further header. for the backside, because this is a request reply example, we have to indicate how long the Solus message router should wait for the JMS responses before returning. And now just apply and save the configuration and we're done. Now it's time to send a request and get a reply through the system to prove that end-to-end -end messaging works. In keeping with the scenario discussed, I'll use an HTTP client to send an HTTP post to the DataPower appliance. We can then follow this message through the data power and Solus appliances until it reaches the JMS backend application. The application will process the message and generate a reply. 
and then I'll trace the reply message back through the system until it makes it back to the original HTTP client that made the request. Okay, for the clarity of demonstration, on the right I'll keep the original image of the demonstration and the message flow and I'll highlight which component we're talking about as we go through the demo. For this demo, you need two external components, which I have here in Eclipse. First, you need a JMS receiver that will receive the inventory requests, process the request, and generate a response. I have modeled that with a very simple JMS application here. Then you also need an HTTP request sender who will send an HTTP request to the Data Power appliance. These will be in the form of orders. These orders will be processed by Data Power, and Data Power will generate the back end inventory request and also then translate the response into a format that this HTTP request sender recognizes. So let's get going. First, let's connect our JMS application. He will start up, listen for messages, and if we look in Soul Admin, the client is now bound to the queue. Next, we have to generate the request to the system. We do this by sending in the HTTP request to the data power. And if we look at the output of the HTTP client, the HTTP client has sent in an e-commerce order, as you, and you can see the format there. It's mocked up for the simplicity of demo, but it's roughly an example order. And then you can see that it actually received the response back through the system, and this response indicates success in placing the order. So now let's switch over to Data Power and track this order through the Data Power appliance. Looking at our e-commerce multi-protocol gateway, we can now show the probe. And you can see here in Data Power, the message arrives from the HTTP client in the format that it was sent. The Solus reply wait time has already been injected by our header injection that we set in the e-commerce multi-protocol gateway. And after transformation, the message is in the format expected by the backend systems. Data Power then sends this message through Solus to the JMS application. The JMS application receives this message, as seen here, and that is in exactly the same format as Data Power sent. The JMS application then composes the response and sends it back to Solus. Solus then delivers that message as a response to the data power request. And we can see this by returning to data power to the probe. And now we can look at the response that passes back from the original request. So the JMS response arrives back at data power in the format sent by the JMS application. It is then transformed into the format expected by the HTTP client. And this response is then forwarded from data power back to the HTTP client as seen here. So that is end-to-end -end message flow. To conclude, hopefully this screencast helped demonstrate how easy it is to switch from MQ to Solus as the messaging backbone for existing data power applications. Why switch to Solus? As outlined earlier, there are great cost savings available and when you combine this with simplified architecture, better robustness, higher performance, and the ability to easily add new next-generation applications, you end up with a very compelling alternative for the messaging backbone. Thank you for watching this video. You can find out more information about the Solus messaging products through this link.